Welcome back to Retro Rebound in today's video. That's me using my hidden blade because ladies and gentlemen, we are going back to Assassin's Creed. From Assassin's Creed 1 all the way up to Valhalla, we got a lot of games to go through. This is going to be a massive video and we're doing all this in celebration of Assassin's Creed Mirage, which aims to be bringing the series back to its roots. The simpler times for Assassin's Creed games. No longer are we doing big bloated RPGs. This is focusing on being an assassin, an origin story, focusing on Basim. So, will it deliver? Well, I have a review out over on my channel, but today we're talking about all of the Assassin's Creed games. We have so much to go through. Let's not delay any further. If you're new here and you're into nostalgic and retrospective content, you're in the right place. Consider subscribing. Let's begin with the one that started it all, Assassin's Creed 1. I always put it this way. Prince of Persia had to walk so Assassin's Creed could free run. Yeah, a little, little twist on the saying there, but anyway, Assassin's Creed took so many of the ideas that were first introduced in Prince of Persia and brought them in there and evolved them. You have like wall running, for example, in Prince of Persia, the silky smooth animations. And when you look at what Assassin's Creed 1 was doing, it's still impressive for its time. The way you can scale buildings with ease, leaping from post to post, just the environment was scalable everywhere. And at the time, this was particularly mind blowing. Not only that, but it felt like there were no concessions on the graphics, it just, overall was a mind-bending experience for many people as Ubisoft was entering the apex of their game, which I think they would soon hit with Assassin's Creed 2. Now, Assassin's Creed 1, one of the things I appreciate about it most is that it was grounded, it was gritty. You can tell by the blue filter they put on top of the game. It kind of brings a more serious visual tone to it all. And it's all about the dark inner workings of people in power who are abusing said power and you as a assassin are trying to pick out the evil that's rooted deep within society, but it's hidden right beneath your nose. And so naturally this is where a lot of the Assassin's Creed mission structure was introduced, like the tailing of your target, the eaves dropping, even the kind of boring mini game open world activities like grabbing flags. All that was here in Assassin's Creed 1. But one thing this game doesn't get enough credit for is the iconic sound design that started off with AC1. Think of how many sound effects were introduced with AC1 that are still prevalent in even the most recent Assassin's Creed entry. I'm talking about the sound that's made when the hidden blade is drawn. It has always been the same, it is an iconic iconic game sound effect that once you hear it, you know what series, you know what game, and that's not easy to pull off. It was also the introduction of what could be. When you thought of Desmond and going through his family tree, and you saw that this was focusing on a time deep in the past, where else, when else could we go in Assassin's Creed? And naturally, we're going to highlight all of that here. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's go through a complete box copy of Assassin's Creed 1 and then move on to some strange twists in the franchise. Get ready, because the first one is probably the most exciting one here in Assassin's Creed. From here on out, it only is downhill. So the back of the box says, and all of the Assassin's Creed games for the most part have a little quote from the character, if you will, in the center back piece, where it says, I have dedicated my life to the study of the deadly arts. I can blend in with any crowd, strike from any direction, and eliminate anyone with a single thrust of my blade my name is Altair and my actions will be remembered for ages to come and then a little breakdown of the experience plan your attack strike without mercy and fight your way to escape crowds react to your every move and will either help or hinder you and here we have open world gameplay that lets you decide how and when to achieve objectives. Meanwhile, on the inside here, we got a nice, I love this art here. And then the manual, which is, this is the best manual of all the Assassin's Creed games. And the reason for that is number one right here, we have the lore friendly breakdown as everyone's looking into Desmond, Altair, what's the background for them, psychological traits. And you'll notice here that there are little breakdowns from characters that you meet in the game that explain how things are done in Assassin's Creed. So, you know, you, I love that type of stuff, right? Just bringing the in-world characters into the manual. Otherwise, this is the only series that can get away with the black and white manual, truthfully, because of the animus, the white color theme. So this is pretty smart by Ubisoft. But yeah, you'll see just little quotes here from the characters throughout the entire manual as they break down things like, this is the perfect time to blend in to avoid being exposed when you see someone like this, they're informed, they're investigating you and so on and so forth. Eavesdropping, interrogation, informers, all the gameplay mechanics 
things that you see throughout Assassin's Creed, the structure of the game, the menus you'll see. And then on the back is a promotion for a game that we've covered here on Retro Rebound as well, Naruto Rise of a Ninja. So that is a complete inbox copy of Assassin's Creed for the Xbox 360. All right, so 2009, the next Assassin's Creed game. You know what I'm talking about, that's right. What'd you think I was talking about? Assassin's Creed Bloodlines, that's right. Assassin's Creed on the go. You know, I think about Tenkaichi Tag Team on my PSP, how it was just the Dragon Ball Z Budokai Tenkaichi experience on the go, and that's what you get here with Assassin's Creed Bloodlines. It's that same on the go, wow, there's a lot of concessions made here type experience that you'd always imagine. Yes, the open world isn't that big, but it's still open-ish. Yeah, the parkour and the frame rate are kind of janky, but it's still that feeling of an Assassin's Creed game, a continuation of Altair's story on the go. There was also a Assassin's Creed game on the DS. This one I remember playing because I, weird story, pulled an all-nighter at my friend's house with this one, and my parents were already hesitant about me going to a sleepover. It was before a school night, and they said, don't do any all-nighters. We will be very upset with you, so I remember playing this all night because I'm stupid, and then coming home the next day, my parents were like, you're really tired. That's strange. Hmm. And I'm trying my best to stay awake. I'm playing this thing with my eyes bloodshot, and I passed out within my hands. So that's like my best memory of the Assassin's Creed DS game. Also really short, beat it like twice that same day because I was just trying so hard to stay awake and just stimulate my mind. But anyway, this was the beginning of, oh wow, we got something here at Ubisoft and we are going to run this thing into an annualized franchise which would eventually burn people out. Let's take a look at Assassin's Creed Bloodline and then get into the big one. Assassin's Creed Bloodline for the PSP, raw box art again, a commonality amongst the entire series. The back of the box starts off by saying, for the first time, become a master assassin on the PSP system. I will travel to the distant land of Cyprus to dispose of the remaining Templars before they rebuild their order and hunt us again. I'm Altair. I am an assassin. Use Altair's signature moves against intuitive enemies. Free run and climb everywhere in a stunning open world environment, keyword there, and continue Altair's mission against the Templars in an all new story. Meanwhile, on the inside, you'd think a PSP game would have a pretty poppin' manual, but look how thin it is. Not much really happening here. As we get into it, we get a lot of the characters that you're gonna see throughout the entire game here. And I always like these little spin-off stories for Assassin's Creed. They still kind of do them to this day with the Chronicles games, uh, the GPS, how you navigate the world, the controls, and, and that's really it, a very thin PSP manual. But key feature here is the interconnectivity between Assassin's Creed 2 and Bloodlines is you could transfer stuff from each of the games, which I actually didn't know about at the time, and they came out on the same exact day. So pretty cool little nugget there, but otherwise a complete box copy of Assassin's Creed Bloodlines. Assassin's Creed 2. All right, this is the big one. Ezio Auditore di Firenze is here, and man, what a start to what would inevitably become a trilogy of stories with brotherhood and revelations that would build out the best assassin character in the franchise. This carefree guy, you know, he's sneaking in people's windows, doing what he wants, to someone who watched his family get betrayed and die before his very eyes. You really feel for Ezio, and you watch him grow before your very eyes. To see that the same man in Revelations is the one you meet here at the beginning of Assassin's Creed 2, this is true character progression. As you watch this man lose pretty much anything and anyone, that's important to him. It is a really sad story with Ezio, and it's funny because it's juxtaposed by this very uplifting setting, this uplifting tone at the beginning of the game. Yeah, it's about an hour and change before you really get the ball rolling with all that makes AC2 click, but it's still such a worthwhile endeavor because of those humble beginnings, the, you know, I'd say wholesome beginnings, like beating up your sister's boyfriend who's cheating on her. That type of stuff builds the familial connections while introducing key gameplay components and overall makes that loss the experiences later on in his story all the more powerful. Now on top of that, this is where for me, I remember <laughs> another funny story with this series, my mom, I swear this is the most nasty story about me, but I'm happy to share it because again, 
Like Ezio, your boy has had some character progression. So I remember my mom got me AC2 for Christmas, and I don't know why, but I told her way before Christmas, I don't want it. So she gets it from me, and what does my bratty ass say, but I didn't want this. Oh my God, if I could go back in time and beat the living heck out of my younger self, I absolutely would. But here's the funny part. Mother knows best, right? Fire the game up. I'm in there. Christmas night for three hours, addicted to AC2. I'm like, I love it. My mom comes in, arms folded, leaning against the doorway. Are you having fun, dear? I'm like, sorry, mom, you were right. And she accepted my apology. But ladies and gentlemen, that's one of my core memories with this game. Number one, mama's always right. Number two, the gift I was always wrong about. Why did I think I didn't need this game in my life is beyond me. You know, I grew up in an Italian household, so we have those traditions. You see them brought to life here in Assassin's Creed 2. But not only that, this was the start of me taking Italian class. I can barely speak Italian now, but still I was connected with the history a little bit more. So seeing someone like Leonardo da Vinci, and I was like, oh, hey, I know who that is. Wait, and, and getting that deeper, more intimate connection and seeing how the important historical figures were going to fuel the arsenal of your assassin such a brilliant idea it really felt like this is where assassin's creed came to life in my personal opinion i'm sure many others would agree with that now this is also where you were going to start getting more of the upgrading of your arsenal also because assassin's creed was so new at the time right we're just only on our i guess technically fourth entry if you count the spin-offs but really our second mainline entry here in assassin's creed 2 and this breath of fresh air is brought into the game not only that but a plethora of new side activities which made sure to improve upon what we had in assassin's creed 1 where i don't think that was the strong suit of the game it felt much more expansive deep engaging you would just spend so much time in this game there were so many secrets packed away in it something that would be consistent among all of Ezio's adventures so why don't we get to some of those now let's take a look at a complete box copy of Assassin's Creed 2 and then get into what I think is a personal favorite among many nowadays Assassin's Creed Brotherhood everybody's favorite Assassin's Creed 2 is here on the Xbox 360 the back of the box says I will seek vengeance upon those who have betrayed my family only to uncover a conspiracy bigger than I could have imagined. I am Ezio Auditore di Firenze. I am an assassin. Where it says open world mission structure with immense variety. Evolve into the ultimate master assassin and utilize an arsenal of weapons and gadgets designed by Leonardo da Vinci with the truth written in blood. And then here on the inside, more awesome disc art. And then we have a slip for Tom Clancy Splinter Cell Conviction promoting the game here, but the manual, once more, you know, we're just on this downward trajectory, you know, Ubisoft's cutting costs here, we don't really get too much going on other than the same UI, the same controls that we've seen before, they do break down the gameplay loop a little bit here, the economic system on how you can earn money, interacting with shops, which is new in the game, and then the Uplay menu, and this is where Uplay was making a big push, as we'll see in Brotherhood especially, but it started here with Assassin's Creed 2. So that is, ladies and gentlemen, a complete box copy of Assassin's Creed 2. Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, or as many like to call it at the time, and let's not pretend people weren't saying this, Assassin's Creed 2.5. Look, I was there when we were transitioning from Fallout 3 into Fallout New Vegas, and it was, oh, Fallout 3 2.0 is what New Vegas is, and now New Vegas is one of the most beloved, if not the most beloved ever, Fallout video game, and the same goes here with Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. Oh, it's just a 2.0 update, 2.5, whatever, it's, it's just more AC2, but now, when you look at AC Brotherhood amongst the pantheon of Assassin's Creed games, it's one of the most celebrated. Now, the reason people brushed over this one was the introduction of a multiplayer component. What? Assassin's Creed and multiplayer? This was during a point in time of the Xbox 360 PS3 generation where companies had to deliver a multiplayer component to help sell games. You know how nowadays it's all about microtransactions, games as a service, getting your nickel and dimes later on in the product. You know how it's always like that? This was the beginning of that in many ways. And I know some would say, well, the arcade and the quarters were, but you get my point of like, 
how do we get people into the multiplayer experience? How do we sell our single player games? There wasn't that faith in single player, was we always had to package it in with a multiplayer thing because Xbox Live was booming, PSN was booming. This was the way people wanted to play. So you'd get Dead Space 2 having multiplayer, you'd get Bioshock 2 with multiplayer, and yes, Assassin's Creed would have multiplayer. There was a massive push across the industry, and dare I say, Assassin's Creed had the most unique offering of them all, where you were stealthily crawling through these online levels, trying to blend in as best as possible while not giving yourself away. If you committed to an assassination a little bit too soon or you sprinted or acted not too much like an NPC, you would get taken out. Or also, if you sprung on someone a little too quick, you would get taken out from behind afterwards. It was this cat and mouse-like multiplayer game that no experience has really replicated or even tried to replicate because it was so true to Assassin's Creed. I know when we think about Assassin's Creed, multiplayer isn't right where our heads go to. It's the setting, it's the characters, it's the story, it's maybe even the fatigue you experience from it all. But multiplayer in Assassin's Creed worked. It didn't feel forced. Maybe at the time for people it did, but in hindsight, I think we got a really special multiplayer mode that was pretty addicting. Now, more importantly for many other people, this was the continuation of Ezio's story, and as the back of the box will say when we go through it, he's no longer fighting alone. He's got the Brotherhood, so it's about summoning friends for help, something that you would see more and more in the future of calling in allies to help you out in battle, to distract enemies, and so on and so forth. Fortress defenses, which was crazy to see was in Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. This is also where I would say the economy of Assassin's Creed began to boom in the sense that you would start to invest in businesses, kind of like you'd have the Via income, kind of like you'd have the Villa income in Assassin's Creed 2. They just went a whole other level with AC Brotherhood. While it was more of AC 2, that wasn't necessarily a bad thing, just building on what existed there. And it made for one of the most fun to play Assassin's Creed games of its time and one of the most memorable ones to many people. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, why don't we go ahead and take a peek at the inside of this Assassin's Creed Brotherhood box, see what it comes with, and then get into Revelations. Now with Brotherhood, you could also pick up Assassin's Creed Ezio Collection, which comes with Assassin's Creed 2, Brotherhood, and Revelations, which we'll talk about in a little bit. This also included a free Assassin's Creed movie ticket, which you'll see we unfortunately do not have here, but it did come with it. As for Brotherhood, you'll see exclusive PlayStation content, although it's covered by the RIP sticker here, but uh, this was a commonality amongst PlayStation and Assassin's Creed games. It was probably the best place to play it if you wanted all the content. So you'll see here on the back middle, it says, I've always fought alone, but one man cannot defeat the entire Templar Order. So I've recruited my fellow assassins together. We will cleanse the corruption from the Holy City of Rome. Together, we will forge the Brotherhood. An award-winning multiplayer experience, lead and control a legendary brotherhood master the possibilities as Ezio and conquer Rome so yeah make sure you remember this multiplayer component here ladies and gentlemen because in, in revelations you'll see a little throwback in there but yeah the trifold manual the least favorite slip you can get in a complete box game and so ladies and gentlemen that is a complete box copy of Assassin's Creed Brotherhood it's 2011, you know what that means? I'm not playing this one. I'm gonna be completely honest with y'all, Assassin's Creed Revelation got the skip from Mr. Matty many years ago. Why was that? 2011, I'm busy playing a ton of Skyrim. Now, Assassin's Creed Revelation, I know, I made a mistake at that time. I should have fit that one into the gamer schedule, but you have to remember, Assassin's Creed by this point isn't the shiny new toy. We got AC1, AC2 is phenomenal. You have AC Brotherhood. We're now into the fourth mainline entry here, if you will, with Assassin's Creed Revelations, and there's the fatigue for many that's beginning to set in. Like, okay, Assassin's Creed isn't this brand new thing, and oh, it's Ezio for the third time. Do you guys happen to really like this assassin? Something that I mentioned in our AC Unity video that just felt like it continued to pour over into brand new entries. Like, oh, we can't let go of Ezio, let's make Arno kind of like him. It was the Ezio plague for many people, but what's sad is at this point in Assassin's Creed storyline, we were getting one of the most special moments in gaming where Ezio, the most popular protagonist in the series, was about to synchronize with Altair. It would lead to, and we're not going to spoil it visually, we're not going to spoil it audibly, it would lead to one of the greatest moments in gaming when these two came together. 
Now in Assassin's Creed Revelations, what made it special was you'd run around as a much more mature, fully grown up Ezio. At the same time, you're chasing down the secrets of the Creed and you'd play through memories as Altair. Just bringing these two together in one game for a final story. It was mwah, chef's kiss type stuff there. And what was also chef's kiss was the hook blade. Bringing that bad boy in, let the streets become a bit wider, let the buildings become a bit taller. It's something that really Ubisoft hadn't figured out again until Assassin's Creed Syndicate, where you had the zip line, they went, okay, now we can make streets really big. So when you had the hook blade, you could reach a little bit further. They always say sports is a game of inches, right? Whether it be baseball or hockey, whatever it may be, it's a game of inches, right? But no. That's Assassin's Creed. When you have your hook blade, those extra couple inches make all the difference, whether it's in combat, whether it's in free running, this is the difference maker here. So with that, let's take a look at a complete box copy of Assassin's Creed Revelations and continue working down this list. AC Revelations. Didn't get much time with this one, unfortunately, because of Skyrim, but love this box art with Ezio and Altair here on the front. Two Assassins, one Destiny. I have always lived by the Creed, my blade have dispensed death and justice in equal measure, yet I am no closer to discovering the truth behind our order, so I must walk the path of my ancestor Altair, in whose footsteps I will find my true purpose. Really, really cool stuff here. Deadlier than ever, unleash new attacks and skills, including the hook blade attacks and bomb crafting skills, enhanced multiplayer, and acclaimed experience goes one step further with all new modes, maps, characters, and abilities. We have a nice screenshot here where it says, play as two assassins as both Ezio and Altair to discover the truth behind the creed now remember what i mentioned here about a little slip for multiplayer this was the uplay passport code to unlock multiplayer access for ac revelations remember ea used to do this with the online pass for the mass effect multiplayer as an example or fifa it also came with uh, exclusive gamestop content yeah so you ubisoft did that so if you didn't have that code redeemed when the servers went offline you couldn't buy it anymore uh, you were you were stuck. You were SOL and you could not play any of the AC multiplayer, which has sadly been abandoned. But as you see here, just a very uneventful trifle manual. But at least we got some cool slips in here. A little bit of nostalgia for Assassin's Creed Revelations. Assassin's Creed 3. This was the one that Ubisoft had to nail. Why is that? This was supposed to be the grand finale to Desmond's arc, potentially capping off the entire series, although they were probably making too much money to do that. That was kind of the feeling going in. Not only that, but Assassin's Creed in its lifespan had now become this series of when and where are we going to go truly. Fans are making lists, speculating about what time periods would be a great fit. Everyone had their own picks, but we all agreed on one thing. The Revolutionary War, the American Revolution, would be a fantastic place for us to go in the Assassin's Creed world. And they did it. I couldn't believe it, man. I remember the excitement I had, Assassin's Creed 3 being real, and when they were going, oh my gosh, and this was the conclusion, they're gonna put all their chips on the table, and it was the most divisive Assassin's Creed game yet. Truly, one of those games where you either love it or you hate it, and it's because of how the open world is executed, the amount of loading screens, the type of loading screens that would blind you, by the way. Why was it divisive? Well, it's the intro. That long five sequence buildup where you play as one of the Kenways and then you transition to life as Connor and build him up into an assassin, slowly teaching you everything. Many people were astounded at how long this game took to warm up. Now, going through this entire series, I will say this in Assassin's Creed 3's defense. There is a about two hour buffer to every single Assassin's Creed game before they give you the robes, the hidden blades, and start really setting you up and letting you go out on your own. Make no mistake, don't get it twisted, Assassin's Creed 3 takes the longest by a country mile, but, it was not an unknown for this game to take a certain amount of time. It's just that they tried to build two characters at once, and that's where things got a little conflicted. I have a soft spot for Assassin's Creed 3. I remember there was a 
massive snowstorm that hit New York in 2012 when this game was coming out. And I downloaded the game on my PS3 in a hotel. I started my playthrough there, and my grandma was the only one who had power in the area. So I went to her house, I played more AC3. Like, this was a core gaming memory for me because I felt like I was cheating. Everyone else didn't have power, and I was lucky to find a way to game. It's funny enough, this game and then Dynasty Warriors Strike Force were like my key bad weather games for me, where like the power went out because of a snowstorm or a rainstorm, and like we went to a hotel and I was playing these games man so Assassin's Creed 3 I have a soft spot for it in my heart because it's also a game that one year later I found my old save file that I had to load for this video back in 2013 I had no games to play and so I said let me fire up AC3 and I was hooked to the homestead mode this is why I love AC3 because if you ask me pre sequence 6 and post sequence 6 Maddie what's the best Assassin's Creed post sequence 6 one of my favorites if not my favorite ever is Assassin's Creed 3. I love the setting. I love the missions, the historical figures that show up. I love the story. I love everything about this game, but especially I love the homestead because it served as the framework to build off two more Assassin's Creed games, but it never gets the respect it deserves. That naval combat, I know it was just a little sideshow and they eventually built it out into a full game in AC Black Flag, but let's keep it real. Assassin's Creed 3 was bringing in a lot of big components, a lot of big pieces that would be seen in future Assassin's Creed games for years. You'd see even the homestead in Assassin's Creed Rogue, for God's sakes. I, When I was going through all these games, I couldn't believe it. I'm like, there it is again, like more AC3. This game was way more important than people gave it credit for. So important that there was actually, you may have noticed here, a Vita game two games based around Assassin's Creed 3. But we'll get into that in a moment. I just loved certain gadgets you'd get in Assassin's Creed 3. My favorite ever in Assassin's Creed, the rope dart. When you're up on that tree branch and you throw it into a soldier's neck and you drop off and yank him up, it is messed up beyond belief, but man, what a nasty tool. Some sicko had to come up with this one. I loved it. Did this game have a ton of loading screens that broke up New York and Boston? Yes, but there were so many games within games within games here where it was a side mission here, collect this feather over here, send these soldiers down the East Coast and gather more resources, go out on your boat. This game was so much fun to me because there was always something new to do, something new to distract you. This was when Ubisoft was really nailing their open world design that eventually people got tired of as many games would copy what they were doing and saturate the scene. Busy work, collect-a-thons, checklist open world objectives. This alongside Far Cry 3 was kind of the pinnacle of the typical Ubisoft open world design that they use for game after game after game after game. But to me, here it was at the apex. It was here that they had so much content, all of it different, all of it fun, that I have a big soft spot for AC3, I'm not gonna lie. But I also have a soft spot for Assassin's Creed 3 Liberation. This one, ladies and gentlemen, answers a question that I have always asked about Assassin's Creed games, and it blows my mind that only one game sought to answer it. Why are we walking around in a hooded robe? We're assassins, right? We're supposed to kind of not stick out like a sore thumb. Why am I wearing big hooded robes and I'm clearly easily identifiable, right? That's, that goes against the idea of being an assassin. So Assassin's Creed 3 Liberation tells a story with a surprise ending, by the way, that manages to really capture that idea. Wearing disguises, having different roles, blending in. One of my favorite components dating back to AC1 is going through the crowd, you're blending in, you know, going in the circle of scholars and folding your hands. That's where the robe works, right? It makes sense, but it just became so identifiable with Assassin's Creed that there was that Ludo narrative dissonance like, yo, if I see a dude walking around with his hood up like that nowadays, I'm heading for the exit. I'm not, I'm not hanging around any longer. And back then it's like, oh, sorry, sir. You know, this hooded figure who's got a whole arsenal on his waistline. Yeah, don't worry about it, man. You just carry on. It just to have a game in the Assassin's Creed lineup that finally answered that and also one on the Vita, which you all know how I love the Vita. Beautiful, 
beautiful work here. And you don't have to have a Vita to play this game or a 360 to play AC3. You can play the remaster, which comes with both games in the Assassin's Creed 3 series. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, let's round all three of these games up, take a look at what comes in the inside of these games, and then move on down that list. We're gonna do this one in a trifecta. We have Assassin's Creed 3, the remaster, which comes with Liberation, and yes, even Assassin's Creed 3 Liberation on the Vita. So let's start off with the base one right here. I love the art for this one with the Revolutionary War in the background. So, so cool. The back of the box says, ignite the revolution. You'll notice here, no longer do we have the assassins quotes, which are sorely missed. The American colonies, 1775. As a native American assassin fight to protect his land and his people, he will ignite the flames of a young nation's revolution. Conspire with real historical leaders, acclaim multiplayer, and engage in naval warfare. And here on the inside, we have not only one disc, but two for the multiplayer. So there you have it. I believe this is a, yep, you play Passport Slip again to get into that multiplayer if you so desire. You get uh, unique looks. So that's always nice. But here we have, again, the trifold Ubisoft cut and cost. So not a really fun one here promoting the season pass. That's all the manuals are good for at that point in time. But anyway, that is Assassin's Creed 3. Then you have the remaster, which on the back, it's the same kind of Ignite the Revolution quote here. They call Assassin's Creed 3 Liberation a bonus game, which I found really interesting. And then here you have just the disc itself. But I feel like they could have come up with a more creative name to include these both, like Assassin's Creed 3, the Americas edition, something like that, I don't know. But anyway, last one we got here is Assassin's Creed 3 Liberation for the PS Vita, a rare Vita representation here on this channel. A stunning open world in your hands. Choose from multiple disguises to stalk and kill your enemies unseen. Not much else of a descriptor here, as you'll see on the inside. Not much else going on, just a little cartridge, and that's really it. So those are all three Assassin's Creed 3 games complete in box. Assassin's Creed Black Flag is one of the most addicting games I have ever played. Now, I may have slandered it a bit as I got into my emotions with Assassin's Creed 3, but there's no denying that the way they took the naval gameplay of AC3 and built upon it with a ship that you could sail the seas, drop off at any island, even go scuba diving, if you will, for some sunken treasure, fighting off sharks, this game was awesome, and it's all about the activities. It's what I said in my AC Unity video. The setting dictates the activities, and the activities, if they're bomb, then you got an amazing Assassin's Creed game here. So the spelunking, the traveling, the breakup of the assassination gameplay, and instead fighting on your ship, spending your resources on ship upgrades, this is what made AC Black Flag stand out. It was so compelling to do everything, take down every massive fortress that you see, fight any ship on the horizon who dares to cross your path and assassinate anyone you desire as well. Making a pirate mix with the assassin lifestyle was not something I necessarily expected out of Assassin's Creed, but at this point, once Desmond's story wrapped up, whether you loved it or hated it, I was never super crazy about it. There's no denying that there was a focus and a vision there that kept the series a little bit in line. And we're at the point now where this sounds like good setting. This sounds like good setting. Yep, throw it at the wall, see what sticks. This is where we were at in the Assassin's Creed lifespan at this point in time. Now, when it came to AC Black Flag, the most interesting part that always pops out in my head was that Abstergo was diving into the memories of people to make movies. That is why you're living out Edward Kenway's adventures, because movies. And uh, I guess, you know, it's, it's sadistic enough to fit nowadays where I wouldn't be surprised that this is something we end up doing in our time. But I just thought that going from Desmond and diving through his family tree, if you will, to what we got here, such a drastic turnaround. I know a lot of people fought with the out of the animus segments of Assassin's Creed. And this is where Ubisoft was very receptive to the feedback. You were not taken out at all. In fact, it was just totally optional, much like in AC Rogue, you only popped out when you wanted to, and there was a whole separate game there that was in first person. So really interesting stuff there, but there's no denying the star of the show here was Assassin's Creed Black Flag. And again, having this main character being connected to the main villain of AC3 builds this immediate intrigue 
in him? Who is this guy? Who does he end up becoming? You know, pirates typically aren't the the most uh, morally guided, so to say. So who is Edward Kenway? And on top of that, the tools they gave you, another thing that makes the Assassin's Creed game click, the berserk darts, the handguns being a little bit more useful, like AC2, you would get the gun, but you'd be lining that thing up for a country mile. But you'd be lining that thing up for a hot minute. At least here, you could pull it off in combos and twist and turn. Such a cool idea, having a sword and a blade, just a lot of options at your fingertips that they'd only crank up again with AC Unity, as we'll talk about next. But let's take a look at a complete inbox copy of AC Black Flag. What do we have here but more exclusive PlayStation 3 content? I find this one hilarious because in a game as big as Assassin's Creed Black Flag, trying to quantify additional gameplay here, 60 minutes of additional gameplay is hilarious to me. Not really a big selling point when a game like Assassin's Creed Black Flag will take up already an easy 50 plus hours of your time. Here on the back of the box, they talk about a pirate trained by assassins. The Caribbean 1715. Legendary pirates ruled the land and sea, plundering fortunes and bringing empires to their knees. Among those outlaws is Edward Kenway, a fearless young captain who earns the respect of the pirates, but whose thirst for gold and glory may destroy everything they have built with a rich open world playground and an award winning multiplayer mode. Here on the inside, it's Slip Central, baby. We have Assassin's Creed Initiative getting the breakdown here. Explore Assassin's Creed stories, characters, locations, and more. And you'll see here they're also promoting 60 minutes of additional gameplay once more for Liberation. We have the HD version, which has been enhanced, getting promoted here. They put so much more effort into that. Again, I don't know why they didn't promote it much. And Watch Dogs getting a lot of promotion here. 90 awards at E3 2013, one of the more famous uh, E3 not real demos that you've seen. A promotion for <laughs> upgrading your game for a measly 10 bucks. Nowadays, you got smart delivery and all that fun stuff. So there you go. And then the Uplay Passport again to get online. So Slip Central here, no doubt about it for Assassin's Creed. Creed Black Flag on PS3. Assassin's Creed Rogue. Ah, memories. It was around this time that I was finally starting to get review copies in some sort of regularity. Little Maddie was growing up a bit, and I remember the duology, if you will, of Assassin's Creed Unity and Assassin's Creed Rogue coming out, one last gen rep, one next gen rep, but only people behind the scenes, if you will, would know this, Assassin's Creed Rogue was being kept to the shadows. Ubisoft was happy to give out review codes for AC Unity, expecting that this will be the one people will talk about. Meanwhile, there was an attempt to bury AC Rogue. In fact, the embargo, which for those who don't know what that means, it's the date that publishers will give you alongside a review code and say basically, you cannot talk about the game or give your impressions until this date, was 12 hours after the game came out, which was a big no-no back then, even more so today. And so when I got my copy of Rogue, because at this time actually they would also mail you the game, I couldn't believe that this was being hidden. AC Rogue was awesome to me. Again, as I'm gonna keep going back to the well on this, the fatigue was setting in for many. Oh my God, we're not getting one AC game a year now, we're getting two. How do you manage to keep pulling this off, Ubisoft? How do you keep feeding us more and more Assassin's Creed games? Well, that's the trick, y'all. You're an assassin hunter in Rogue, and the way that Rogue, will say, finalizes to carry into Unity, I think this game is awesome. Is it Black Flag 2.0? Yes, but Black Flag was addicting, and now I think you got a more interesting sort of gameplay loop here, and that it's been evolved upon. To me, it's almost like the AC Brotherhood to AC 2, and this game just constantly getting shoved to the bottom never made sense to me, because even Ubisoft clearly did not see value in this game, and it's funny because AC Unity, as I've already talked about, was broken at launch. And so why would you hide this one when it was the functioning one, the one that had no problems whatsoever? So AC Rogue continuously overlooked, even to this day. If you've never played it, it's worthwhile. You play as Shea Patrick Cormac, again, a guy who's part of the Brotherhood, you know, working with his fellow assassins, and after a dark twist, he starts hunting it's his friends down. Hunt. I love that kind of story because it plays off the idea of, hey, you're familiar with Assassin's Creed, right? Assassins versus Templars. But what if you were the one hunting down the assassins? 
to me, that is just speaking to my soul. I love these little experimental spin-off games. If you couldn't tell by the stuff we've covered here on Retro Rebound and my general opinions, I love the experimental nature of popular franchises. Like, I've talked about with Pokemon, with Mega Man, where Battle Network is my favorite part of the entire Mega Man series, because it just speaks to a particular taste, a particular format, that also happened to speak to millions of people around the globe. Kind of the same mindset here with Rogue. It didn't introduce a ton of brand new things, but it was a new twist on how you'd approach the gameplay loop and who you'd actually be assassinating, which is the biggest part of the game while also incorporating parts of AC Black Flag and the spirit of AC Brotherhood here. I just thought this game again was so cool and the fact that Ubisoft didn't even have confidence in it, well, that's a dang shame. So let's take a look at a complete box copy, I guess, and then continue on with the rest of the series. AC Rogue, here we go, back in the box. 18th century North America, amid the chaos and violence of the French and Indian War, Shea Patrick Cormac, a fearless young member of the Assassin Brotherhood, undergoes a dark transformation that will forever shape the future of the American colonies. As Shea, you will experience the slow transformation from assassin to assassin hunter and use all your skills to take down those you once called brothers. With the limited edition including the Siege of Fort de Sabal mission, as well as the Ultimate Hunter Pack with enhanced naval gameplay, new combat abilities and weapons, and explore a vast and diverse open world. On the inside, ready? Nothing! Hooray! Access the in-game manual online, right? We love all that, or in-game itself. So that is a complete box copy of Assassin's Creed Rogue. What a launch this one was, am I right? It's really hard to talk about Assassin's Creed Unity without addressing its infamously buggy launch where your face was disappearing but your eyes and teeth were there absolutely horrific nightmare fuel level bugginess here and still to this day if you fire it up you'll see in some of the footage as i'm running around the streets characters are dropping in in front of me i actually have a very interesting story on how ubisoft handled the review codes for this one alongside rogue which came out the same day and we'll talk about that in our Rogue segment, but when it came to AC Unity, I mean, it's so appealing to me because I think it was the evolution Assassin's Creed needed, and I am very lucky to have had a positive experience with Unity when I first reviewed it. You can see the footage I used all the way back on my Mr. Maddie channel when the game first came out. The worst thing I had was one time I fell through the map. Otherwise, I was not having the plethora of bugs and glitches that others experienced, even down to an audio level. Yeah, Unity was not the best. There was definitely a lot going wrong underneath the hood here, but when it was all cleaned up, what you got, in my opinion, was one of the best ever Assassin's Creed games. The overhauled parkour, how smooth it was, just scaling downwards to me. It's always been fine on a horizontal and even upwards in Assassin's Creed games. I thought it felt great in Revelations with the hook blade, but with AC Unity, what they got right was scaling downwards, crawling through windows, that sense of openness, that breadth of scale, all captured here where there are next gen games and i'll say it again till my i'm blue in the face there are next gen games that still don't have as much going on in their worlds and as much interiors to explore as ac unity does absolutely not i mean this game you can go into many people's houses apartments you'll find different interiors decorated differently which is very much asset intensive like there was a lot happening here that is still so impressive to its day on top of that this reminds me of hitman absolution where one of the things that they were touting with that game were big crowds and what a fitting time period in the French Revolution to have massive crowds in an Assassin's Creed game. I mean, there are some moments you'll be on top of a, bu a building and it's like looking at a bunch of ants below you. There are so many people populating particular areas. And so it made crawling through the crowd like the original AC1 all the more palpable, all the more believable, how you could blend in even with such a ridiculous outfit, Liberation, shout out to you again for getting it right, that you would just blend in with so many people here. Not only that, but this game boasted co-op, which I still think is a great fit for Assassin's Creed. While multiplayer in its traditional sense was on the way out, AC Unity had the perfect answer in co-op missions, heists, just working together, taking out enemies with your friends, because it made Ubisoft focus on good level design to support co-op play, which also in turn, in single player, supported multiple entry ways, lots of hidden ways to approach missions. And that's also what made AC Unity click, is in the main story, this is the only Assassin's Creed game that said, you can go here and kill him this way or that way, there are optional objectives and secret ways to kill people everywhere, secret entrances everywhere, 
AC Unity just continues to deliver, I feel, as you play it more and more. And they've got amazing side activities like murder mysteries, Paris stories. There's so many fun things to do in this game, and it just helps that it's so impressive in its design. I know it's not the most polished AC game, but it's definitely one of the most fun. So let's go through one more time, as we've already done this before, a complete box experience here for AC Unity, and then get into Syndicate. AC Unity, here we go. One of my favorites on the back of the box. Make history. Four centuries, France has been ruled by the privileged few. No longer on this day, the people of Paris have risen up against tyranny. Now, in the midst of one of history's most chaotic and brutal revolutions, the fate of a nation rests on the edge of the assassin's blade. With play an epic single player campaign or bring friends for two to four player co-op missions customize your master assassin arno with gear weaponry and skills and explore a gorgeous open world powered by a groundbreaking next gen game engine and it includes a bonus mission here on the limited edition on the inside we have a promotion for the season pass with the dead kings expansion upgrade your assassin more content also promoting assassin's creed chronicles we have rogue getting promoted which was coming out the same exact day and leads into assassin's creed unity we'll talk about that in a moment and then you have the code for the chemical revolution dlc so that ladies and gentlemen is your if i can get the slips in here on the right side my muscle memory is not quite there for xbox one copies anyway a complete box copy of assassin's creed unity okay let's all say it together we were wrong we were wrong about Assassin's Creed Syndicate. It did not deserve the slander it got at its launch. Let's be real. Assassin's Creed Unity comes out, and as I mentioned, pretty broken launch, right? Then you have AC Rogue, two games in one year, and then you got another one a year afterward. The fatigue is real for the fan base right now. And here comes AC Syndicate with one of the most jaw-dropping open worlds on a visual level. You can do parkour across a river where there's moving boats. You can get on a train hideout that's moving and it'll be at one end of the city when you first get on and it'll be on the other by the time you get off and it's all happening in real time this is absolutely one of the coolest assassin's creed games and we didn't appreciate enough guilty as charged for myself by the way i have a review over on my mr maddie channel that's called assassin's creed syndicate same old same old what was I thinking, man? I mean, look, I know hindsight 2020. I know we were at the peak of Assassin's Creed burnout. And with the broken launch in Unity, AC Syndicate definitely caught some shade that maybe it shouldn't have. But when I think of so many of the problems this series has had, this game has so many answers. Combat in Assassin's Creed games always, always, always either felt awful or was a counter spam. You just wait for an enemy to hit you, counter, they're dead in one hit. Wait for an enemy to hit you, counter, they're dead. I remember when I made my Black Flag review and my AC review on Mr. Matty channels, you could just see footage of me standing there waiting for enemies to attack me and I counter kill all of them. No enemies were threats. AC Syndicate sought out to overhaul the combat, and so it was a much more action-focused approach, which I appreciated because guess what it meant? There was great stealth options, which I'll get into, and then there were great hand-to-hand -hand options when you failed the stealth, which will inevitably happen. In Assassin's Creed, I know the idea is you're supposed to stick to the shadows. That is the gameplay that is fortified there, and when you're going hand-to-hand, -hand, you know, you might want to run away, perhaps, but when the counter spam was so easy, there needed to be an answer that was just more fun, and this was it. Weakening enemies and doing double kill takedowns, triple kill takedowns, quadruple kill takedowns was awesome in Syndicate. You see, this whole idea of basing a game as far as we've got now, by the way, in the timeline, the Industrial Revolution, was kind of scary. Guns are more prevalent, technology is more prevalent, how do you stay being an assassin during this time period without tripping up on what tools should be made available for you? Well, no, they had all the answers. They were putting a gun in your hand. They were giving you a zip line, letting you cross massive streets, scale massive buildings. It had the parkour system of Unity evolved even further where it just felt clean to go from point A to point B. There weren't those mistakes you made in the old Assassin's Creed games, which I know some people prefer in the terms of parkour, but there weren't those mistakes you were making where, ah, man, I didn't want to jump down there. Or I didn't want to jump off that ledge there. I wanted to go to my left and so on and so forth. Syndicate had all the answers. I'm not going to try to sell you on it as a perfect game. 
there is a lot of checklist content. It doesn't have, I think, the best oh, protagonist. The Fry Twins, at least Evie is cool, and I really like her in her serious tone. Jacob, like, let's keep it real. This dude is so, so corny. So, I hate to use the internet's favorite term, but cringeworthy. So yeah, there was that, but then they have the Jack the Ripper DLC. Like, it's just for every critique I have of the game, there's an answer right down the road that I go, wait, that was fire. And so, I just feel, out of every game we've talked about on this list, Assassin's Creed Syndicate is the one that if I look at all the reviews I've posted about this series, I definitely regret that one the most. I understand the situation and where we were at, but this was a learning experience for me. AC Syndicate is legitimately awesome from the gang wars to Templar hunts. There is a whole section that is optional content dedicated to World War One where you can get in an anti-aircraft cannon and shoot down fighter planes beneath the London Bridge. Are you kidding me? And people hated this. That's how bad of a launch Unity was, and that's how tired people were of Assassin's Creed. Because I guarantee now, as we're in this much more spaced out development cycle, we don't get Assassin's Creed games often. You're hearing this going, this sounds awesome. But yeah, unfortunately, when it came to Assassin's Creed Syndicate, just amazing game wrong time for so many people myself included last but not least assassin's creed syndicate once more playstation exclusive content with the limited edition including darwin and dickens conspiracy missions play it first here we have 10 bonus missions the dreadful crimes for assassin's creed syndicate love the box art here and then on the back it says welcome to the family london 1868 the Industrial Revolution fattens the purses of the privileged while the working class struggles to survive until a pair of assassins emerges from the underworld to rally to their defense. Recruit your gang members' all-new brutal combat system and play as Jacob and Evie Fry. So, on the inside, what do we have? But... Nice little digital goodies. We love all that in Retro Rebound. <laughs> Master Assassin's Pack, you can download that. We have the Darwin and Dickens Conspiracy missions right here. There's a season pass promotion for Jack the Ripper, as well as everything else coming to the game. And then here would be the code that you'd use to redeem for the Dreadful Crimes exclusive mission. So 10 missions, I wonder if that equals the uh, 60 minutes of gameplay like they mentioned on the Assassin's Creed Black Flag uh, promotion on the front of the cover. But anyway, that is a complete in box copy of Assassin's Creed Syndicate. So this meant it was time for an overhaul. We don't have copies of Assassin's Creed Origins, Odyssey, or Valhalla, but ladies and gentlemen, we're still going to talk about them here today. Granted, the complete in box copies for those are, are not eventful at all, but still, this to me was the beginning of the end. This is where Assassin's Creed became more of a history action series than a series about assassins. Now, Assassin's Creed Origins naturally tells the origin story, you guessed it, of the Hidden Ones, who would eventually become the Assassins. And so Aya and Bayek are key components of the future of Assassin's Creed. And if you are a, what I call AC purist, you're absolutely going to adore what AC Origins offers. For me, the setting, the characters, the exploration didn't click with me as much as I would have liked it to. Especially with the combat going more of an ability route, it felt more and more like Assassin's Creed was walking away from what made it special. Meanwhile, Odyssey trekked more into the full-on RPG territory, where Origins felt like it couldn't decide, do we want to be an action game? Do we want to be an Assassin's game? Do, do we want to do RPG stuff? It just didn't commit to any. It was more focused on loot, and, and in turn, I felt that this game was directionless. The first 10 hours of Origins are awesome, but afterwards, it just, to me, tapers off, but I get why the AC Purist loves it. Now, at the time, AC Odyssey was such a breath of fresh air, but even more so, I just love this game unapologetically. Like, I think Cassandra is such a hilarious, amazing protagonist. I know she's not your common assassin, but playing as a Spartan warrior, again, history action series now, not really about the assassins. And this is where bloat started to kick in. Assassin's Creed began to really level gate content here. While the leveling system was introduced in Origins, this is where it was heavily enforced, where even exploring felt too rigid, too structured, too much based around a leveling system. But at the same time, you got amazing choices, you got cool loot. So it wasn't the Assassin's Creed we knew and loved, but I have such a soft spot for that series. And some of the side quests 
are hilarious. And then there's Valhalla, another game that I love. I mean, again, I have the review up on my Mr. Maddie channel for all these games we're talking about. I thought that AC Valhalla was great. It's just such a long game. And by the end, you're so beyond ready for it all to be over. And what's kind of sad with Mirage is that you need to know all about AC Valhalla, which is a game many people dropped off of, to get the full effect of Mirage's story. So this is where we're at in the Assassin's Creed timeline. Fatigue is at an all-time high. This time, not because the series is in your face 24-7, it's at an all-time high because now Assassin's Creed is a series defined by bloat. So can AC Mirage answer the bell? Well, that answer is over on the Mr. Matty channel for that review. But with that, ladies and gentlemen, those are all of the Assassin's Creed games. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm looking forward to hearing what your favorite is, what your least favorite is after this massive video. If you sat with us throughout this whole entire video, again, my thanks. Take great care of yourselves, and I will see you in the next Retro Rebound. Peace out.